afraid, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win your life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big What is going on everybody, and welcome back for week number four of the ECAC Top 8 Plays of the Week. Now at this point, you're probably realizing two things. One, that's right, I'm gonna be with you all season long as we jump through the best moments of every week. And number two, wow, Seth Rollins really only wears one thing when he's not on the clock. And it's, I, I can't even defend myself, it's a comfortable outfit. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump into week number four and see what these players brought to the table to beat out their opponents and be victorious. Wake Forest was already up a game, there were 4 minutes left on the clock, and they just couldn't find that first point to take the lead and put them up 2-0 in the series. But in a final moment of success, Malone clears it from one coast to another and finds an open goal, giving Wake Forest the lead once again. These champ 3 and champ 2 is doing, I mean seriously, look at Malone making advantages for himself. He wow! And he will put Wake Forest on the map, this game number 5 could just go their, their way. I just want to say Malone just said, I'm going to show you what a champ three can do. All right, buddy. On a control map in April. We're at the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup. Let's make some noise. Oh, and it's going to be jump the what? This corner judge is just for one, two, ten. He needs more in the... They're doing even more here! You gotta touch the point! Mr. Collins walks it in! Joy Boy is gonna drop. Knife him. Right out front. Yeah, three, oh, two, one. Right. Running. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to another exciting edition of Esports U Live. We have some amazing college esports on the docket for this evening, but first, let's get into the recap of what we saw last night. It started out with the ECAC Rocket League Week 3, Ohio Northern University versus Stevenson University. Stevenson currently on a hot streak, and they want to keep it up as they face off against Ohio Northern. Ohio Northern started off strong with an early goal, but Stevenson got two back-to-back -back goals to snatch the Game 1 victory from the opposing team. Game 2 was a little slower, but to start off again, once we got halfway through, both teams kept on shooting for goals, and we actually went into an overtime. It was not a long overtime, as Azize from Stevenson made sure to slam in the goal to 2-0 the series. The tempo in, was in Stevenson's hands as they kept on scoring goal after goal to quickly put themselves on match point. Ohio Northern tried to hold off and shoot some goals, but Stevenson had their number the entire time and claimed another victory to put themselves at 3-0 in the conference. Well done, Stevenson. After that, we were blessed by some ECAC Overwatch Week 3, which featured one of the most popular schools in the community docket, which was Ball State University Black. But catch this, we're not in the fourth dimension. They were going against Ball State University Red, the parent team, sister team, if you will, there at Ball State University. This one started out as a pretty interesting match as the Ball State Civil War was among us. BSU Red taking on BSU Black couldn't have been a better storyline. You could tell that both BSU squads were having fun with this match as they swapped around their roles a bit, compromised some, some strategy and composition. BSU Black kept on putting up a good fight, but their sister team kept on getting the upper hand and claimed the Paul for their own. We headed over to Pariso next, and BSU Red kept up the aggression to claim a quick hybrid win with Raven Striver having a blast on Wrecking Ball, the good old hamster. Dorado was the third map, and BSU Red finally went back to their original roles as they seemed to tighten up a little bit. BSU Red made sure that BSU Black could not get to the payload, and therefore they would end the map and give them the 3-0 victory over their sister team. It's BSU Red, baby! You know who Paulie's rooting for? The sign, custom, BSU Red Flair. Woo! Woo! You gotta love it. BSU, fan favorite right there. 
<laughs> and that's going to do it for the recap for this evening. But coming up tonight, we have some amazing college esports on the roll. And what we have first at 7 p.m. EST is going to be the good old NJCAAE conference, which will feature their spring 23 Valorant season. And it's going to be the Hawkeye Community College Community College Red Tails taking on the BSC Bryant and Stratton College Valorant Blue Team, which is going to be an exciting one. That'll be a 5v5 best of three commentated by none other than Hail Monkey Man and Atsoka, which I am super hyped to see on the first game of the evening. Coming up next at 8 p.m. EST, we have a East Coast Conference 5v5 Spring 23 Valorant match as well. This is going to be Damon University taking on the CSI Dolphins College of Staten Island, of course. And that will be commentated by none over than Ravishing Ravish and Ash, which I am so excited for. Good to see them back here in the Esports U family of casters. But without further ado, let's get right over to some of that first NJC AAE action featuring Hail Monkey Man and Atsoka. I don't even want to wear this black blazer anymore i've had enough Ugh. it's college esports and paulie hype wants to see an amazing first match so without further ado monkey man at soka take it away and bring in the hype for the njc aae conference and the ecc after that over to you all We're trying to match that energy, and we're going to keep it up here for week one of NJC AAE action. I'm Hail Monkey Man in the booth alongside his first debut here on this awesome channel. It's the wonderful, the indomitable, the ever legendary Captain Atsoka that's joining us here today for some Valorant. Captain Atsoka, it's so awesome to be able to be with you in this booth all over again. But for the first time here on this channel, I need to know before we even get to the matches at hand, how you doing today? man it's it's a great thursday evening well i'm doing absolutely wonderful because this is my first ever debut here on esports U, and i really regret wearing blue all of a sudden you know <laughs> i'm looking at it and you know there's some points where i get a, a quick glance at myself and i look like a, a floating fat face and then uh, and then on top of that of course i got my blue light lenses on as well just you know to help the strain but all in all these are all the pains that i love to have when it comes to esports so yes i am in a very fantastic mood and i'm having a very fantastic thursday evening and i cannot wait to get into the two matches that we have coming our way yeah this one's gonna be a wonderful uh start kickstart to this uh, particular conference that's gonna be debuting their first week of the i guess winter tr slowly turning spring competition it's gonna be the bryant and stratton bobcats versus the hawkeye community college red tails as these two will be facing off for their first week of action it's valorant which means there's a ton of maps and of course we're gonna have the map spread for you it's nothing too different as the meta the stratagem and the practice of all of our i guess kind of standardization here captain Atsoka keeps solid but we are going to be starting at least away from ascent as we will be kicking off with icebox and that's it gets a bit chilly out there this one is going to be the big measuring stick to really measure out how both these teams will be interacting tonight you know what for so long i didn't want to be that guy to say it but you know what ever since oxygen esports came out and said it i feel comfortable to say icebox is my favorite map i'm calling it Ooh. i'm saying it planting my flag in it i absolutely love icebox so much fun and always a good game. I hardly ever see like a one-sided blowout on Icebox. It's usually a good time. But with that being said, we got a couple of hot takes going in before the startup here as far as map selections. And not to mention that decider on Fracture. That right there is, is up for discussion as well. You know, again, a lot of these maps here are up for debate so far here backstage of Esports U. Yeah, so Ascent seems to be kind of in that marquee spot of always being in the middle. It's it's a, the most it's a quintessential map. It's the most uh, uh, played map. It's the one that pretty much if you know how to play Valorant at all, you're gonna play on that map. And it's the it's the bending of the spoon between the the handle to the scoop. Where will you end up at the other end of it? We get to find out. But this is the first step, the big step that is Icebox. It's about be able to navigate through the verticality. We've seen some great movements on Maze. We've been able to see people be able to make great use of 
of post plant on site a b is one of those places though that can be the trap and we're gonna get these agent selects coming in hot and ready for you here now it's gonna be key because your controller often here if not always is viper and that's already keyed up right now for the side of red tails as hawkeye college does go forward now initiators can be a different play and also your duelist sometimes you see neon but a lot of times you see jets i wonder though because we got this reina this is gonna be a very aggressive entry and exit process for both these teams i just want to thank jabba for debating me and switching to the reina because they were hovering chamber for a moment and then that <laughs> you know i threw up in my mouth a little bit i'm not gonna lie to you I'm sorry, I think Chamber after the nerf is is just completely out of the meta at this point. Especially on Icebox. Like I and trust me, as a former Chamber main myself, I can tell you Chamber just ain't in anymore. KJ is now the dominant set. No, I'm planting my flag in that one as well. But I will say that when we're talking about Icebox, I do love the Sage pick coming from a loss on the side of the Red Tails. I think that having that Ice Wall definitely is a huge difference maker. But do you see what I see coming from the Bobcats? Yes, we are going to see the KJ. However, I will say as the Sova Initiator pick... I'm a fan of, however, we see from the side of the Bobcats, they're bringing the double duelist composition, whereas on the other side, I do believe they were bringing the double initiator. Yes, and that's going to be the biggest difference here because it's about cutting down space, being able to really dominate enter and exit space and motions whenever we get onto site. A, B becomes a little bit of a weird situation, and often you'll be able to find the Sage kind of setting up a wall, making that hard cut on the corners just underneath the nest, and then be able to get a fast plant and then post plant hold. Same is true, though, as you get the talk screens that will be crisscrossed, uh, at least going onto this map, onto A, and that really cuts short the quadrant that you're going to be pressing up into. I think KO is fantastic for the no fun police siren to go off and really enter into maze, kind of scot free, at least for a little bit, but. You're going to have those Viper Pets go up a plenty. I do wonder, can the Jet be just as dominant? And, I mean, with as aggressive as the styles they want to play, Jet with Reyna? That's, I mean, that's all, like, 2021 style Valorant mm -hmm. here, Captain. This that, that feels like, hey, we're just playing Icebox for fun. Yeah, I mean, you're right. And I'm not a big fan of the double duelist composition in general. You know, again, that feels like old meta. I feel like we've moved past the double duelist uh, composition. But with that being said, if you are going to double duo, uh, especially on Icebox, I would say you go jet uh, phase like instantly you go or jet. Yeah, you, yeah. Bring that action to it because you want to come in with. Oh, I'm sorry. Raise not phase. I'm tripping. But anyway, yeah, you want to <laughs> go jet raise because again being able to get those up and over uh, maneuver abilities just goes absolutely insane again being able to come through with the showstopper on top of that getting up and over a lot of those obstacles and jet can do the same especially over on the a site so yeah i would not go with a jet reina combo i mean if if anything i wouldn't be upset with a jet phoenix combo but regardless, I still feel like the double initiator is just a little bit more viable on Icebox. So I also wouldn't mind seeing a KJ-KO combo. But, you know, we see that we had the split between these two teams. One side got the KJ, the other got the KO. So kind of a scramble right now. It only is going to be remain to be seen on what works and what doesn't work when we get ready to head into round one. I mean, when you really break down this attacking composition, because Killjoy can use that lockdown for kind of a post-plant feint as well as entry, but it's really kind of tough to set up those positions on this map in particular. It doesn't really cover the entire array of the the, the entire box of your map. So it's, it's an interesting. It's going to be, all right, we can shove you off to one side and maybe be able to come back to you. You're also going to have Sova off opposite of them that will be able to shut that down because there was the damage boost off of the hunter's fury but uh the 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 no command off of the ko just seems much more aggressive and pushing and it's that's why i'm both worried and excited off of a double duelist because when a jet hits an arena is able to blind and they work like just a devilish uh, turbo killing machine together it can be it can work wonders and it's it's so uh wonderful to kind of make use of because killjoy seems to be an omnipresent threat on the aggression piece on an attack it can be kind of ticky tack depending on where the gadgets kind of really end up and usually you hold them in hand except for having that uh post plant or rather on the forward push having that lurk and that's going to be something different because on this defending stand when they they go to attack 
back off of the Bobcats, they will not have that uh, de denial of the alert. So that passive instrument for that alarm bot is going to be really, really good. I wonder how they're going to make use of that. If they're going to keep someone more lind back over to attacking half, just kind of keep uh, track of mid because mid is big as well for making movements and swings around this entire map. And you know what? It's funny that you you bring up the the conversation with the jet, especially on the side of facade um, um, for the Bobcats, because jet is definitely a problem and has been a constant problem in Valorant. Because especially when you get the marshals and you get the operators in their hand, they can shoot and then dash away instantly, and that becomes a problem. But when you have that KO pick with Kazo or Kutso, by all means, correct me with these with these player names. But when you have that KO pick and you hit that no fun dagger, as you like to say, that dash becomes null and void. And then all of a sudden, that problem you had with Jet is no longer an issue. We already get to see this wall go down in mid as Atlas is trying to both hold up the world as well as hold up the forward push and you have to commit to it. It is the most powerful on pistol rounds because you don't exactly have a lot of I guess just kind of lethality behind you. But First Blood actually goes over to Unholy, who does find Kuzo, but they're traded out from distance by F2-1. So Nero is going to be lurking around in mid, and again, they get in. They thought, hey, let's take this kind of default attack over into A, just kind of rolling ball of thunder it. But now they recognize, hey, there's too much resistance here. Let's start working around. It's going to be Miro that finds one from behind. That's two to go. So they're now seeing that B is wide open. That plant's going to be for free. And that it is, and they get it done in tube up high, which is just going to make it that much more difficult to actually get the defuse because it leaves them vulnerable to many of these cheeky peaks. Meanwhile, you have Facade going to be watching out over towards Kitchen, and they're going to get a little support from this Reyna, and they're able to get the read again. Here comes Amida, able to get that elimination on Atlas. And that was a huge read coming out of the control for Kitchen, and then here comes Facade to finish things up with a little bit of action on the Sheriff. You know, I was going to start talking some, some mad-ish about Facade's crosshair because they, they get that from Minecraft. Apparently, they're hitting diamond blocks for free with it, so it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. That thing is beautiful. Let's see the swing on it as you just see them kind of fully infiltrate into Kitchen. As soon as they found one, it, it was the great rotation. They put down the wall on that defensive... Um, position and then it was all about just taking over start cooking no one's finding them looking and that looked great so so far everything's coming up uh, good for the bobcats and you, they're gonna start group together here as well because since they lost previous round all right it's time to get that eco built up and then you're gonna see this four man hold all the way inside a but f2l is gonna be holding this close proximity here just inside b main but Broda gets it with the bulldog on wispy that sounded so clean. The bulldog on Quispy. I liked it. Meanwhile, you got Exala trying to go for some aerial assassination, but gets beat to it. And easy come, easy go. Guess what? The bull, oh, I'm sorry, rather, the, the Bobcats have a 2-0. I mean, I almost called them the Bulldogs. I'm getting my animals confused here. Bobcats <laughs> definitely more frightening than a bulldog, in my opinion. But now they do have this 2-0 lead, and they take it with spectacular fashion. But now, here we go. This is the bonus round. This is where things start to get get interesting because if the side of the bobcats are able to take it here they're gonna have a tremendous lead in terms of economy but with that being said i'm trying to look and again my eyes aren't what they used to be okay that says amido or miro or mira I think it's I think it's Miro like M I R O. Okay. I think it's I think it's like Miro. I don't know. I've only got like all my weeb knowledge to really run. Okay, off of. so because I, so I, I pray. All right, because that's my, that's my Puerto Rican side coming out of me thinking Ah, Mira, look, look over there, Mira. <laughs> you know, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but well, no, Mito got it, Miro. Gotcha. Yeah. Well they, well, they also got it to the temple as they put in the ground early. This is the weapon differential that comes into that third round. If they can break in and be able to get this bonus, it would be huge for the Bobcats. But they're so far being shut down by distance as a big wall bang by Jabba being in control of this hut as it's now going to be still a 5-2 just absolute push away. But B is free. If Prota, who's kind of utilizing Unholy as a scout, it's kind of weird to have a uh, Killjoy do so, but they're going to be able to bring that spike over. They may still be able to get a plant, but they don't recognize that they're actually sandwiched north and south just of F2L, who is sneaking through Kitchen and hasn't been able to really recognize where anyone is. So the Owl Drone comes out, and hi, hey, Pickaboo, I see you. 
Yeah, that they do. And here comes F21 or F2L again, throwing out a little bit of recon, but you know they get pinged as well. They're gonna have to back off. And now someone's in the kitchen with Kuzo, and someone's in the kitchen. They know, as they're gonna have to back off. Meanwhile, you got Unholy trying to get the read here, but can't really find the angle. And now this 2v4 scenario doesn't seem as unlikely. Quispy gonna be throwing out the snake bite, trying to get a little bit of damage there. Force the peak, and Quispy comes through with the shot. And now Unholy will find themselves on the chopping block, and Jabba comes away with a four piece. Jabba had to do that. That had to happen because Miro was two away from getting their own Empress. And I was starting to think, all right, if this is going to snowball and get out of hand against the Red, uh, Red Tail Esports for Hawkeye Community College, I was thinking that that, that was going to be Miro. That was going to be the tip of the spear that would do it. But it was Jabba that was able to find their footing. And so they now have their own Empress. A step away is Miro after that death. But it's, you know, you're seeing this kind of ult economy start to skew up. And that is the difference between the effect of. Of uh, Reyna that that can just be that main player that was huge they had no kills prior to that they find four in this round and that's gonna be something that they have to be consistent with from this defensive stand but this is gonna be a real rifle round for the most part F2L is gonna be saving as they have to be able to go and get a marshal and then you have one light shield on unholy but this attack it's again kind of a default spread can they bring the spike over into a can all the extra pressure on to B and more be able to drive an early rotation yeah, we'll take a look there. Unfortunately for F2L, they get gunned down very quickly by Miro. As now we go to Excella. Back to Miro now. Over here, over towards the B site. They're trying to play off of this rotation coming from HCC. And the spike will be going down on the A site. Meanwhile, you have literally almost every player over there towards B. A nice, good bait and switch coming from the Bobcats. Sometimes you just be able to hit them quick. And then you had just everyone hard rotating that created some free space. So now they're playing for that post plan, playing a little bit cheeky with it. Quispy has had some Quispy headshots. Facade is trying to find him from distance, but no, it's going to be Quispy that gets dropped down. And Facade that's hit just the same. Atlas recognizing they don't have a lot of time. Play for the save if they can. Maybe they want to sneak in and get killed by the bomb and find themselves some worth. They actually take a little bit of chip damage onto their shield. I think they will be saving that Vandal. Maybe a bit of hero antics is going to be played away. So this will be a third. Well, they actually get wiped out. So Atlas will get some extra coin in their back pocket. But that's a third over to the Bobcats as they recovered pretty easily. Yeah, that was a big oof, you know, um, honestly, just because, you know, you're thinking, oh, okay, they, you know, at least save the Vandal. But no, they go right to the outskirts, right to the edge, and then they evaporated thanos snapped out of existence but they still have enough to buy a vandal going into this next round here heading into round number five and currently the bobcats do have that two round lead and right now they have the advantage in the economy as well this is something that we were looking to see if hcc would be able to kind of keep a step ahead but by giving away that extra round you know unfortunately the bonus round even though they won kind of feels a little lackluster now kind of chilling out for a bit. Facade and, well, that gigantic uh, villager-esque looking crosshair. Miro is going to sneak on over, and this is just kind of a melee in the sky. Miro waiting for the reed peak, and that's going to be an easy one for Kuzo. 3k over for Xala. And with only a 1v5 left to bring it back, the hero moment may not come. But again, and with the Viper Pit investment, this is kind of a heavy investment as well. For that post plan, they, they, this is the, this is confidence that you get out of the team. They build up their ults very quickly. So you know what? Let's wipe them out. Let's be able to get it. But you do have the Empress that can rebot. It is online, and Jabba can be able to find that difference right made. But we go through the first five, and eighty percent have been able to fall into the Bobcats' hands. Well, you know, I'll keep it real with you just for a moment, just to be honest. You know, I feel like, you know, using your ultimate and getting a dub and wasting it is a lot better than wasting your ult and taking an L. So, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, regardless, you know, that's what Viper's there to do, especially on Icebox, is to lock down a site, use the Viper's pit. So, you know, that's what I expect from the Viper. And, you know, like you said, they still have that ult. The Blade Storm does come out for Facade, as now you can see they're going to use that Minecraft Steve crosshair to try and find a little bit of damage, but they can't get nothing through the green wall. 
Maul. Meanwhile, Miro will be gunned down, and so will Facade. A lot of crispy trades coming out. Oh, man, you cannot follow that up with a hard R. It's just not working. Trades, trades, it's trying to happen. But Proto from distance is going to do so right in the middle of the fray as they do fake out, getting the ult orb. They know they're there. It's basically an alarm bell, and they're going to be dropped on a thrifty round. Now, that's huge right there in Soko because this was this was starting to get a little bit messy, but through the first half of the first half, Retail Esports with Hawkeye Community College. They were able to find another. So it's a little bit of hubris, a little bit of that early press Miro was bloodthirsty but could put it on the ground I mean that's what you <laughs> to be completely honest Reina's are extremely bloodthirsty but as long as you don't insta lock a Reina you'll still get a little bit of respect so Miro definitely communicated that hey I'm, I'm picking Reina and I'm gonna do bloodthirsty Reina things and they are they're top fragging right now they are at the top of the board with a seven eliminations three deaths and one assist and now as we get ready to head into round number seven we will see if with that thrifty round Will HCC be able to start to mount a comeback as Jabba does get one elimination on the board? Now make it two! Love to play away from their spike because they like to be able to clear sites together in mass and then kind of give them a free pathway, but that is not what's been for free. Facade, though, finding two as Jabba is dropped. They have two defenders out in mid. They recognize that the spike is down, and now they're trying to play off of the swarm grenade, and they're able to re-peek over heaven and just dominate in mid. So what are your thoughts that the quick play to get up underneath bridge and then take them from behind would be able to give them some advantage? Oh, it's just swung away because the facade just started being a killer honestly my favorite part was just seeing unholy throw out the nade like asap just off of reflex was like oh no throughout the nade and then followed it up with a head click literally as the vandal was coming back out the crosshairs were perfectly aligned with their opponent's face so again a fantastic display coming from the reaction time of unholy but no you're right the flanking was definitely on point again you gotta watch out for the flanking facade as now we do see a viper's pick from hcc go down early here on the a site all but kind of forcing a rotation over towards b and you can already see you have two players from hcc trying to anticipate that rotation now see as they're doing this jabba has been the one that's been able to kind of get the best first contact so they will just kind of step up into the fray and that takes down miro their their key killer so the rotation is cut down you have them trapped in a, a weird kind of back corner quad if you can be able to continue just leaving them there while the time ticks then you have the best position available because that viper's pit really is kind of showing your cards but you have to work around it if you simply leave that as your only kind of a push or press away then eventually bsc is going to start getting back to it oh and that's going to be jabba that is dropped facade is a fantastic replacement for miro and now we see ourselves in a 3v4 scenario advantage over to hcc but look at this mid lane that we see being played by facade who manages to pick up an elimination and not only that but you have proda over there towards b who's able to take down ft f2l but that res does come in clutch, and it really does turn this one around as what seemed to be a turnaround victory for the side of the Bobcats is now even up in a 3v3. 3v3, be a little bit tenuous. You have a little bit of damage into that Sova. They're trying to be able to hold it from distance. You have that, oh, that swing facade. They're hitting sharp, sharp shots, and my goodness, being able to have them just line up for you, it's like a pop pinata at a party, and you're the one that got all the gifts. Wow, one away from all the attackers on the Bobcats being able to have all their ults, and that one was ultimate in its own. I'm telling you, Facade is dominating the kitchen right now, and you just gotta let them cook. I mean, they are popping off, being able to come through with that double headshot. Yeah, honestly, if I was on the other side, I would just avoid the kitchen now because before that, it was Miro that was dominating in the kitchen. And then Kuzo. Kuzo had a little bit of a moment there for the side of HCC, but mostly the kitchen has been dominated by the Bobcats. Now you can see Facade with the Blade Storm again trying to head over towards this A site. Does cause a little bit of a ruckus, enough to force some of the HCC players to back off, but the push will not be denied. It's going to be a full send here coming from the Bobcats. And finally, you see Facade going down, but Miro already having a two-piece it is an ice rink out there and they don't want to slip because right now the press attack has been able to give them some space and they just cannot get away from the vulnerability that's kicked up by that snake bite kuzo but no miro they're going to be putting this into a three of the one kuzo will not be left to stand that charging cord a little bit too short for the robot to stay up and full so that is bobcats 
starting dominance. When they kick up speed at Soko, when they really start pressing that attack, it is amazing to see how quickly they can find their target. But they've been repelled a couple of different times. This time, though, it's stuck. Shout out right now to our top KDs because Jabba is really holding that team together for HCC, but it's BSC that's been just a little bit more consistent. Yeah, and you could really tell just from the from the elimination spread here. I mean, you got Jabba who's in the double digits, but they're the only one. Meanwhile, you're looking at the side of the Bobcats. You have at least two that hit double digits, and then you have the Viper from the side of the Bobcats that are literally just one elimination off from the double digits. So you you have players that are really holding their own on the side of the Bobcats, and you really need to see um, HCC start to spread that around. They need to take a load off of Jabba and start getting some of these head clicks. Who's up? Close proximity, they're trying to be able to clear that corner, but no one is there with the, those shock darts. They will make it their way over the nest, and that's a favorable position for Miro, but it's into this trade. Kuzo is able to get rid of Exala, but they've basically given themselves away. They find a second, they find a third! Kuzo coming up big. Three bodies, 30 HP, it's working just fine, but Facade is on top as they're trying to hold down Box. Will a fourth, fourth come? Kuzo one away from an ace, but he will be dropped early, and Unholy comes up huge. Holy mackerel, you thought it was all coming up daisies, all coming up Hawkeye, but instead they get a black guy and the Bobcats find an eighth. And you know, that's that's what feels bad for Kuzo because they, they did their job, they popped off. I asked, Kuzo delivered. They came up in a major way, taking some of that load off of Jabba, but then, unfortunately, the remainder of the HCC squad did not pop off. So again, one kill away from the ace, and it was Unholy that was left standing to get yet another win for the Bobcats. And now, they have a six-round lead, and if HC is not, HCC is not careful, they could be going into the second half looking at an either a 9-3 curse or a 10-2 split. A rough one on the spy. You know what? Shout out right now. Unholy is quietly one of the best players, and if not the best player on this team. Because they're at the bottom of the, of the KD stack. They've looked so good at finishing. What, what everything has been started. Are we skiing shooting? Doing it from distance? Oh, the repeak is just standing their ground. Exala, not one bit intimidated by a Bucky as the, just the damage spread is a little bit too great from it. But first 11 rounds, 9-2. We're one away from the curse. We're going to have a real rifle round. There may even be an operator in it if Jabba chooses to do so. I don't know if they're going to stick with that. that. That's just not the most pro a premium weapon for a uh, for Arena, but it looks like they're going to commit. Okay, I respect this. Zero out. Just run out the bank account. See what shots you can hit right now at 10-10. Now, who knows? They might have a Vandal back at spawn, too. You know, you could buy the Vandal, drop it, and purchase yourself an op. Once you're done That's with true. the op, run back to spawn, grab your grab your Vandal, or grab, grab your Phantom. Who knows? But Jabba does make good use of the op as they're right. able to get the first peak, and Kazo is able to follow it up by getting the elimination on Facade. And now F2L comes in with an elimination of their own, and right now we're just spitting hard facts from the kill feed as this spike finally does go down on the B site inside of the Viper's Pit. Not fast to lose. It's freedom to live. And they're making sure that they are living and everyone else is dying. It's going to be Kuzo. Because you have Quispy with the this infiltration. But Exala was watching. This is their pit. 2v2. And that 2 goes down. So it becomes a 2v2 on the universal outset. As they have one very, very damaged. It does drop. That's going to be Exala taking care of work. They own this area until the Airbnb rental comes up short. Proto with a shock dart. They're going to try and just push him away. Have to be able to go in to get this trade. It's too, there's not enough time. And they're going to be able to win it anyway. Taking great care to make sure that spike goes off. And this is BSC. Domination right now. Icebox just looking fresh for them. I'm actually curious. Yes, they picked this map. So very well practice, uh, practice methodology for the Bobcats as they're really kind of keeping all of Hawkeye at bay. So we're just going to pretend like we didn't just see that? I mean, come on. Pro Proto came in get, and flexed just insanely hard just now. Like, you didn't have to go that hard, Proto. They were sitting on a Hunter's Fury. They could have waited for the audio cue and then just rained fire. They're like, no, nah, I'm going to do this the old-fashioned way. I'm going to get a head click, and I'm going to end the game. So the, the whole time, they could have just called in their Hunter's Fury and made quick work of it. But instead, they showed this, They showed off the skills, and the skills definitely paid the bills. That was a fantastic play from Proto to secure and confirm the win. Now going into the second half with a 10-2 split in the favor of the Bobcats. And Miro already going to start things off here in round 13. 
Oh, they're trying to give a high five to uh, to Exala, but Exala's like, calm down. That was one kill. They're still trying to slash at him, but there's a lot of kills just filling up the field like a candy cane. Quick stripes. Jabba and Kuzo were able to fill it a couple of different ways, and Kuzo does the same. Kuzo took a moment to be able to find their form. They have to be able to come up with some momentum here in this pistol round, but so far they're left with all of Jabba. A very hurt Facade. Facade knows where Jabba is, so it's about where that head gets exposed to, but Facade takes care of business. That hurts because, I mean, if you think about the weapon diff this could end up being a forced buy-up or maybe the one that they're just gonna say you know what we wait esc is probably gonna be able to run with this kind of momentum they're gonna have bulldog specters and more captain Ahsoka. this it seems like an inevitability but the story is not quite done yet i'm honestly just glad that we have yet to see a single stinger show up because i <laughs> despise the stinger with every inch of my valorant body so uh, kudos to facade and all the rest to make smart decisions with your money i hate seeing wasted credits and unfortunately for the side of hcc they did decide to bring out a stinger i wish them all the best but when you're going up against a specter with a steve crosshair i i just don't see it going in your favor <laughs> Sting I don't know if they did they push that new patch where everything was gonna get more expensive and less damage. I don't know. Oh my goodness, the transfer facade looking for a third, but they're gonna get some extra damage. Jabba does use that stinger to high effect, but then they will be highly effectively put into the ground. And Kuzo is done the exact same way. 12-2. Make a fast work continuous bullet spray able to make accuracy into a lethal moment is facade they're nearly hitting the 20 bomb for this map and they've done it just well they're gonna maybe do it just short of 15 rounds can't do that with a stinger <laughs> You can't. No? And you know what? I'm going to even stick to it. Like, if you're going to make a wise investment decision, again, this is for my econ majors out there, because keep in mind, this is collegiate esports. We, 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 we know a little a thing or two, you know, because we're learning a thing or two while we're enjoying our esports. You got to make the purchase worth the credits. And when we're talking about purchasing credits and purchasing power, I'd rather buy a frenzy and save a chunk of change than to invest in the stinger. Meanwhile, we're getting well and underway here in round 15 and already facade trying to get some cheeky peeks with that vandal. Frenzy gang rise up. It's on the facade trying to be able to take care of but it's gonna be Kuzo that does find him with the bulldog. Atlas, the world too great. Kuzo, a Bot too strong. Trying to be able to the battle box with that battle bot, but Jabba is found by their doppelganger, but it's same the same way for the F2L. There's a lot of trades, but this comes down to a single attacker. Quispy doesn't have, well, they have a, a judge. If anyone's going to come hunt them down, it's going to be a bad time, but they want a vandal. They can hear the rope. They're just above. They're in the crosshair. They're able to find one as they hop around. 45 HP. They're making use of it with a classic. Does this come down to a classic duel? They put the poison orb out. Out, and they're gonna have a judge to come up with but there's just the tiniest open window can they move through no dice no time proto will be prototypical and be able to get this one 13 2. and that makes me sad just because i absolutely love the judge that to me i just want to give the judge a hug because it is a fantastic weapon it's always fun with the judge but again i feel like the judge is a little bit more viable on maps like ascent where you can get you can play to the corners a little bit more you could be a little sneaky and a little cheeky unfortunately we saw the desperate attempt of trying to get something with a little bit more range the bulldogs the vandals they were right there so close but yet so far regardless ggs all around for our first game on icebox and a fantastic showing coming from the bobcats you know what, Bobcat's looking really, really good, but we still have the quintessential map. Sometimes the first map isn't all that it's cracked up to be. That's just a pocket pick for one of our teams. This next one is the one that everyone's played on. Ascent will be coming up as we have map number two for our NJC AAE Week 1 action coming up after this. from Keene University was fully aware of that and didn't just find a death blossom. He found a full-blown death garden to keep his team alive. Sound barrier to go away as well, especially now that you have your own. It's gonna be a little bit more breathing room because it looks like the one to Okay, there we are. Now it's coming up big. This Reaper has bloomed. That was just gorgeous amount of patience. Coming. GVSU Blue found themselves up by five rounds, and it's always better to turn that five into a six. It's incredible, however, that this team doesn't always need all five. It can come down to just one player and how much they can really GVS do. 
and Illusion delivers with efficiency. Three in a row, no time left, even if they had the chance at Orbital Strike out of the last it. This battle between Muskingum and St. Francis was insanely close. Only three players in a round, and there were one player left on both sides, both down to their final stock. Things were looking pretty strong for St. Francis, their Luigi only at 40%, but it was up to Splat to do anything but. Just keep him, keep, keep him off stage with that Zare. Oh, if that bad spot right here for that, Teo. If that block didn't, uh, if that block didn't disappear, about, oh, no way. Oh, just steps on the, Hose steps on, on the, the on. pressure plate. A tale as old as time, Pace White versus Pace Gold, and Pace White's morale was through the roof as they won a fight. But little did they know, this was Lofi's world. And they wouldn't be living in it for much longer. Going in with the blade. Uh oh, oh, blade is out. Oh. It's hacked. It doesn't matter though. Slashes oh. away for two. Looking for a third. Oh. Looking for four. Won't get it just yet on the blade. However, the slashing dash works out. Lofi's got three. Looking for everybody else oh, on this team. Four. It's a white. The Inkling versus Ganondorf matchup is not very good for Ganondorf, but let's be honest, which matchups are? In this clip, we're going to be watching as JD from Fisher learns the hard way that. You never really want to meet an inkling off stage. Sooner if you don't find that kill confirm or that kill oh. or a bomb off stage like that. Kai that Yushi's bomb angle is so Ooh. good today. Yeah, that bomb angle was beautiful. Week four of ECAC Rocket League was absolutely insane. CMU and FC were tied up zero to zero, but it was Gand who told FC. They shall not pass game number two. Side of FC, they've only got one player for a moment there. They're trying to recollect. They're trying to reposition. But how do you position around a pinpoint accurate shot like this? Gand goes crossbar down for the first goal. Adams in reverse. Backs the defense off with that. Whenever I'm on the mic for Valorant, you'll often hear the line, check your corners, repeated over and over and over again. And even with me not on the mic to tell them, I have a feeling this team may have learned that lesson. Nah, he's, he's got to take the shot. Take it. Oh, yeah. Just... Sounds of teammates running on through oh. and come on dive. The 4K on a completely unaware trio. And it's 11 nothing right now. And those are the top eight moments we thought deserved just a little bit more time in the spotlight of week number four here at ECAC. Thank you all so much for watching. If you're interested in what ECAC has going on, we got something happening nearly every day of the week. So check us out right here. Editor, that's a challenge for you. Wink, wink. And folks, this has been all for me. Thank you all so much for watching. Enjoy this, and we've got plenty of weeks down the line. Can't wait to see what comes of them. https colon slash slash twitter.com slash septilence don't put that in i'll get in trouble And I promise it won't be that long. Welcome back to week number one of NJCAAE action here on Esports U. I'm Hail Monkey Man in the booth alongside the ever amazing Captain Atsoka. And we're getting ready for our next map between uh, Brian and Stratton and, of course, Hawkeye Community College. It is going to be on Ascent, the most practiced, most played, most uh, essential, quintessential map of the likes of Valorant. And, you know, uh, we've, we've seen this map so many times. It used to be, what? Bind or Ascent, whichever order, and then you end on Haven. That used to be the order. Now with Bind and Breeze taking their own little vacation, maybe Bind just visiting Breeze, I don't know, it's very warm between them both, we get this kind of differential. You're going to have Lotus, not in this matchup, but that has created kind of this dichotomy between a bunch of our maps. It's more like a puzzle feature between everything, but we go back to the one that everyone has pretty much solved here, Captain. 
Yeah, and it's because this map is completely neutral. You know, this is where the glove com uh, gloves come off because y you can't even come up with the argument that, oh, it's offensive-sided, oh, it's defensive-sided. No, this is literally the the go-to map when it comes to settling disputes. Yo, if you got a problem, we'll solve it. I'll see you on a scent. Okay, that's that's literally how it goes down. And it's really going to come down to this composition as we can see both teams starting to kind of feel themselves out here. You got to come to this with a KO. I'm sorry, I'm sticking with it. And not only that, but look at what HCC is bringing to the table. It is the KJKO combo, which is literally my favorite grouping, my favorite pair when it comes to going on to Ascent. Right now, I'm a little bit concerned because Atlas seems to be floating onto that chamber. No. We've talked, we talked about it. it okay. Damn All boy. right. <laughs> there you go. All right. You're making good decisions out here. Now, what's interesting, too, is that we do have the uh, the change up between that Reyna entry from Jabba instead over to the Jet. I think Jets, you know, obviously they were both the predecessor and now successor of your chamber meta because they were the one that had the tailwind first. The, the get out of jail free button, the go button and now that seems to still be the same thing. This is also going to be the same starting procedures and positions as you do have the Hawkeyes hanging out on defense again and BSC on this attack. That means a lot of pressure. You're going to have Facade on their own jet, and we saw how effective that deadly combo between <laughs> those two were. Oh, it's unholy. They picked the chamber. Okay, okay, but they were pretty good, right? So, I mean, they're fine. They're fine. I mean, fine. They, I mean, they popped off. Uh, I mean, uh... <laughs> Go ahead, you know, you do you. <laughs> but, I mean, if you can do it, by all means, go ahead and do it. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say that Chamber can't get the work done, but if we're talking about competitive play and, you know, you're talking about playing against players who are on their top form, I, I, I think you could you could have went with a better pick. But if you can make it happen, then make it happen. Especially make it happen when you're getting cast by the captain as we get ready to get around number one underway here on Ascent. And I will say, in full disclosure, the composition coming from the side of the HCC looking a little bit better, especially with the KO pick and uh, on Ascent going up against the Sova. Again, not sure why Prota decided to go Sova with their initiator combo. And they're really sticking with the double duelist here, even though... Chamber is an honorary duelist, so you might as well even be triple duelist at this point. See, I I do appreciate it though because I think we're 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 seeing kind of two separate comps. We're seeing what is the meta, what it really has been the most uh, wide array of use, especially on the killjoy that makes that mass uh, just kind of contemplation of your life off of those lockdowns be able to take over really all of B, and then also hard entry. This is pocket picks. This is comfort picks. This is feel good from the Bobcats. Prota is going to be the initiator going forward, and they're trying to be able to put Kuzo in a rough uh, position, but they're hitting shots! That's three easies, as no one will be here for free, and they're trying to look for a fourth, which they will find. Miro! Everyone thought that Kuzo's house was open. The windows were there that they could just throw themselves in. Well, now you're left with Unholy on a chamber, and Kuzo's feeling just fine, but it's a 2v1. Yeah, right now it feels like this round, at the very least, is de is going the way of HCC, but you still have Unholy there, who manages to get the second shot right, but now you still have that one Kuzo, who is looking to get their ace here, goes for a nice little cheeky shot there, and will pick it up! Unholy comes away with a clutch round, and in their defense, Kuzo was literally one shot. So again, fantastic clutch play coming from Unholy. Sometimes you just need a pocket sheriff. That is going to hit so hard. And Kuzo was a moment away from being a hero in round one. But it's going to be Unholy that does it even better. And I, you know what? It's the difference of that teleport. Whenever they really kind of changed up the two anchor system for the rendezvous. And now it's more of a, like a grand proximity from the same. But it's actually much shorter. It's, it's an interesting kind of change up. You're going to have this push out of tiles. Mid control into, uh, into ascent is key. Because it gives you a lot of free entryways. Either into this cubby, which Kuzo is going to try and find some value, but it's the Guardian that's just shooting too fast, especially with Mira at the helm. I absolutely love the Guardian, and I'll yeah. keep it real with you. This is a hot take. This is, cop this is Captain's hot take of the day. It's that the Guardian, to me, feels like an like a semi-automatic marshal, the way that it's able to deal damage. And look at this. Yet another fantastic kill coming from Miro with the Guardian to get a flawless victory going the way of the Bobcats.
and hey, it works out just fine. So, I, I also love the Guardian. I think because the Guardian has that high penetration power, I think it's like, it's a bit more, or maybe about static with the Marshall, but it gives me kind of like faster Halo 2 vibes, whereas the Marshall kind of hits about the same way. But that thing can be so rough to have to deal with. If you have someone that's already good on Marshall shots, but hey, now you can actually be able to scope it if you feel like it, yes. All of you that tell me not to ADS, I will ADS, and that's the gun I do it with. I do have the defense that was able to f at least break up the first three, and they will be able to have that tailwind to dash away. Miro is leading this march like they are the conductor in a parade, and the alarm bar will find them. The weakness comes through. Quispy is going to have to deal with some early pressure here in the marketplace, but they do to get the dark cover out to really stall it for now. Now, you see, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm learn you a little something about parades, being that it is Mardi Gras season, and I'm here from New Orleans. We don't have conductors. We got drum mages. Ah, you dig? Right, right. Okay. So, now that we got our Mardi Gras knowledge out of the way, we are getting back to the game, and already you can see Miro getting yet another elimination on Kuzo. Kuzo's elimination, this, the elimination specifically chosen for Kuzo, and now Quispy being able to get one on Facade. I should I should have known about drum majors because I, I was in the band, but apparently that one didn't stick after about you no know, I don't know 15 years of separation from it, maybe more. What is sticking though is that the spikes continuously going down. The defense is suffering at the hands of it, as you have all of one from distance. But that's Miro that finds four off a wall bang. They are chewing up the side of the wall, and the same thing is happening to Atlas's face as they hit the floor. Seven and one right now for Miro. They've got their Empress facade is a step away from having their blade storm if they so feel like it. And holy, a nice modest 3-0, but that chamber hasn't died. Bucky gang assemble Quispy. Where are you gonna where are you gonna sit with that? Where's that gonna be? Is that gonna be out in the garden? You gonna be hanging out? I, I love the Bucky, man. Like, that's that's one of my favorite shotguns in this game. I really do. Oh yeah, you can go absolutely nutty with the Bucky. Sometimes yeah. you can even get lucky with the Bucky. And it's really a it's really a good time. You know, it's it's a good nice uh stepping off point for when you can get a judge. And you can definitely make a lot happen with a little bit. Meanwhile, you do see the TP coming from this omen. They're looking down, trying to find anything. And it will be Quispy who finds the end of a bullet, specifically Miro's. Press in and the continuous push. Miro lays to waste any sort of living being that's not their friend. They're all foe. And Exala's doing work as they move all the way up and ask for reinforcements. Miro will cover them. It's a shorty. Well, hey, that's just... Uh, short for short life because unholy will be able to lay down their unholy rain upon their skull and doing it with style so so let's check out the alt economy you do have the empress off mirror if they just really want to run the blade storm is now online just the same opposite of them you have the no fun police from kuzo 4-0 right now we talked about how this map in particular is the defining line of teams that uh, are consistent and well practiced into valorant and you can see very much off the rip now that seems to be in the back corner of the Bobcats. Yeah, and meanwhile, you got Jabba Shanks down there coming out with the Operator, which is where you want it to be. You want it to be in the hands of a Jet. And already, they're putting it to work, being able to get the first elimination off to the side. But now, look at F2L trying to get lucky with the Bucky, but unfortunately gets dealt with by Proda. Now, Proda does get rid of a little bit of a bot there up in the top right. Looking at Jabba. It will be yet another elimination. Who is doing a great job with that op? You get two. Got one remaining as unholy as yet to die. That one could be a forthcoming stat, especially as they are exposing their temple into archway. And guess what? Atlas did find them, exacting a bit of vengeance because they uh, killed him quick last time as Atlas was only able to hold a shorty from distance. That one works itself out. So, uh, Jabba pretty much continues to be that difference maker. Maybe not top of the stack right now when it comes to the Hawkeye defense, but when they need to be that power play, they can be ruining that B entry. So we're gonna see some default. That spike is gonna float. Seems like it will parlay over to A. This is gonna be a real rifle round, and I'm thinking the Empress might get activated here early. I mean, one way or the other, it's, it, it will be activated at some point, at least I hope so, unless, you know, the gun game is just so unbelievably nutty that they don't need to. Regardless, Jabba, gonna be watching the A main here. They do see one peak, but they can't get that shot to go, and they're gonna mad dash out of dodge. Hero. Doesn't need the Empress. They feel good anyway. They pop glass. Gonna pop smoke as they push on the site. You have facade. At least does so from distance, and that spike will be put down. And actually, that's gonna be Atlas that does the same thing. They'll be able to dismiss, and the plant will go through. So it's a 4v2. Rota, oh, on this flank. 
Oops, wouldn't work. Of Atlas, and another to be the same as that operator. Did they even pick it up? It's gonna leave by. It looks like eventually they do put it into their hands. So that is now even worse as investment. Exal is just asking anyone if they even want the gun. I think they're gonna be trading out. But no, Exal is keeping it. Okay, so put that in your controller's hands. Why not keep them all the way in the back? 11 2 as Miro has found their stride and they are sprinting past everyone. Okay, you see what we're doing here now. We're gonna buy the Vandal and we're gonna drop the op in case we want to come back to it again. Okay. This is this is smart right here. This is economy 101. You think we're learning about business? No, we're learning about purchasing power in Valorant. Meanwhile, you do see Unholy with the op. No big surprise there. Chamber trying to make it back to their former glory. Meanwhile, Miro does get an elimination. So does Proda. And now Miro again leading the way to get the elimination on Kuzo. And now we'll take the A site with an iron fist. Hero breaks window. Everyone knows that at least someone is there. They're gonna get shocked by their own teammate, but Lear is just simply to squint. Was there ever a defense to see in the first place? They run down the ramp, they shrug, and it becomes six seven and or six one in a hurry. So Atlas, look, this, this team needs to find a way to find that early repel. They were able to find some great kills. In that first round where Kuzo just couldn't be able to find the fifth, they were in a rough situation, pretty much one shot from anything that would sneeze at them. But since then, it has been free reign for the duels to be able to get onto site. And that's why Reynas, if you have a comfort pick with them, are nigh impossible to stop. That really becomes Kuzo's quarry if they can with those null commands oh but unholy doing chamber things they just walk up through tiles and get a quick kill oh yeah again you gotta love watching chamber do chamber things especially after the nerf they you know whatever nerf you put a op in my hands i'm still gonna make it work and now mito over here over towards the boatyard trying to get a read on atlas who's gonna close the door not bad and jabba is able to beat unholy in the 1v1 sniper battle and mito on to kuzo now facade does get a flank able to get jabba but atlas comes up and gets a little revenge hero oh Drop by Atlas. Atlas has been patiently doing what they can from the top of this stack for some red tails. And now they're having kind of the just the sidestep mambo. It seems like Zala was just kind of waiting it out. They're going to run straight into the alarm button. The paranoid comes through. Do you see him? Yes, you do, but just not soon enough. Even with the vulnerability, that weakness will still be strength. A couple of damage, folks, but it is Bobcats that add another round to the stack. 15-3. 5.0 KD right now for Miro. And there's a lot of ults online, pretty much for the entire field to save one on each side. Now, you see, if this wasn't a truly competitive match, if we weren't on Esports U right now, bringing you the best competitive Valorant in the collegiate scene we can, I would be waving a finger at an Exala. Let them get their <laughs> 1v1. Come on, that was fun. We got to see the back and forth, the give and go, the tip and toe, and they were trading blows. But then Exala had enough. We're going to round number nine, whether you like it or not. And here we go, F2L. is going to have to back off because they know that Recon Dart would have picked them up. Meanwhile, Jabba able to get an elimination on their doppelganger there in the mid lane. Quick blast to uh, the twin. Saying, hey, no, that's my shirt. I wore it first. I wear it better. Continue to wear it. The Owl Drone does come out. And the from the shadows is actually going to go all the way into Boathouse. So now they have surrounded F2L, who's trying to put bulky shots down yard. And they actually have a paranoia coming out as well. Quispy does eliminate him with a judge. So Proto gets traded. 3v3. Spike is on site. They're not planting it as of yet. They're waiting for what these trades do come about with. They don't want to expose themselves. Kuzo nearly is able to get through a full leer, and Exala is just kind of hanging out. It's like, okay, all right. I'm not going to tell you where I am. Enemy remaining. Is this is a 2v1. They actually, get, they're just completely faking it. Is it wait on Quispy? You bet. Better, stronger. It is an omen diff. Yeah, uh, with, but with that being said, you got to give credit to you know, to Quispy at least yeah. a little bit there. They were having fun with the judge. They managed to get two eliminations that round. So not too bad, not too great, but you know, they made the the save round, if you want to call it that, uh, a little bit worth their while. But now take a look at this. You are going to have the Tor de Force come out for the side of the Bobcats. And Unholy has already been able to wreak havoc with the Operator. Now with the Tor de Force in hand, let's see if they can find an early pick yet again as we get ready to head into round number 10. It's even worse because in their back pocket, they have an Odin. So you either get to receive a single golden bullet for free, or you have to deal with an Odin spraying you down. That's not fun at all. 
but Unholy, again, called him out in the previous game. They seem like one of the best players in the entirety of this for adaptation. Miro's playing straight up into the fray of that electric line of death, but it ends up being Rota that drops instead to it. You have a double swing. Jabba with a Marshall finds a headshot on the Miro. They can really get those taps when they find the space to do so. Exala from the corner flank on Kuzo, and that's Unholy that finishes them off. Yes, they do. That, that Odin drops the hammer. Can we just take a minute to point out that Exala teleported directly into a Hunter's Fury <laughs> at point blank range? They didn't even teleport behind the Hunter's Fury. They teleported face first into the Hunter's Fury and didn't die. Normally, that's a technique where you, you think, like, okay, this person just wanted to get eliminated. But somehow, it worked out. Like, that's the play you don't think would work. But I guess when the Bobcats do it, it, it works. Also, that's a, a wonderful ego play. You're just gonna teleport straight into someone's face. Hey, you better get that kill, and they do so. So a lot of damage over into tiles is Rota. Seems to be just dropping them like flies. Kuzo does get rid of Miro after another trade of putting that Phantom back into the grave. Proto again. They're the first one through, and the first one to break bread with Site A. 4v2. Stragglers hanging out in B. Odin. Too easy. First shots just finding their mark way too well. Yeah, you gotta love the Odin. There's mm. really nothing that isn't enjoyable when you have an Odin. Especially when you're on the defensive side of the scent because you know you just line up over there towards B main, spray through the wall, and more often than not, you are going to find an elimination, even if you weren't necessarily looking for one. There, there, There is a method to the madness that is an Odin. I know people you would get the common... Uh, thought that oh you just spray it's just a spray and pray no there's actually a recall map that you can follow and line your shots up pretty well so it's always it's always nice to see but you know what we're gonna put the own away and we're gonna come back out with the op operator looking pretty uh they do have an Odin maybe all the way back if they want to run over towards it. Oh, the judge, though, is able to put them, uh, put Mira on their back just after they pop that Empress. And that'll be more judgment being laid down like a gavel. And this is their court. 3K for F2L. That's a flawless. Hey, you know what? You're finding some uh, some worth some value there. And what the judge? I, I love judge plays. It's mm -hmm. just it's click. Click until you're, you can't click no more. Oh, yeah. It's always fun with a judge. And they managed to have a good bit of fun, including a flawless victory. And that's the way you want to end the second half. And now, once again, going into the second half, we have a 10-2 split in the favor of the Bobcats. Now, let's see how HCC will do now that they have the spike on their side. Last time around, they didn't get a whole lot of chances. This is something that they didn't really get to have an attack. They went, what, three rounds? And... This time they want it to last just a little bit longer if they can. So, uh, same round story, different you know, slight outcomes. Gotta win this pistol. Haven't seen them win a pistol yet through these first two maps. So let's see if the beginning of the second half is a different type of novel to be written. They're putting shock darts down the yard, and it's Proda that is just finding their marks. So much damage, and Jabba can't even survive the hitting the button. Yeah, those 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 are those lineups. Those are the ones you go into a custom match and you practice those. But regardless, it is going to be an all-out push coming from the HCC as they do get the spike planted in the boatyard. Right, post plant holds. A lot of players. 3v3. Uzo waiting. Oh, able to find the mark on the facade. They were a hero a couple times. They just couldn't complete, complete that legend. I mean, ducking down, and they're able to find it. The first time through this best of three, Kuzo and HCC. They're able to find a pistol round, and that is the beginning of an entire different tale here, Captain Atsoka, because you know so many players, they look at it, if they can get it, feel more confident moving forward. Oh, absolutely. Once you get that confidence in you, it starts stirring. And you can see Kuzo right now leading the way for HCC. And if they can continue this on, they might find themselves a new groove for Kuzo. Meanwhile, we are going to see that buy round come out the side from HCC. And it's going to be a whole lot of specters and one marshal. Let's see if they can make the most out of it. 
That mark from distance. You have shorties in the hands of BSC. And they're going to hang out one into logs. Of course, they are sussed out, and that's going to be a quick smoke to be able to move through. But just above the head of Marketplace, they're going to continue to delay and dismay and deny. Big flash. Exala is going to be put off of the sight line. And you have the paranoia coming out. Quick mark, but they are taken by surprise by F2L. Oathouse is now clear. The sight is clear, except for what's coming down the pipeline all the way onto this marching lane. Jabba now going to be hugging into the corner there on top of the box. Meanwhile, Facade, Lordy, Lordy has a shorty. Looking to find an opening here, but not going to be able to find much, especially if you're going to be aiming down Boatyard. They are the lone survivor for their side, so I have to say this is looking pretty good for HCC as they are steadily making a comeback here. And I'm not really sure what the plan was there. Facade, I assume, was just waiting to get flanked, and Quispy was the one who didn't want to waste the time. As now HCC find themselves on the board for the fourth time here on Ascent. Okay, all right. I how do you get to your second step there, Captain Atsoka? You take your first. That's how that. That's how we're doing this. So one step at a time. Defense of Bobcats is going to be able to buy up. They're going to have a judge in the hands of their omen, who will be straight up in the face, right outside main B. But this seems to be a pathway over to A, which hasn't been hit as of yet by Hawkeye Community College. For me, I'm looking to run it down. You have the null command, and you have a jet who went a little bit too high, too close to the sun, but it's Nero that's doing the same thing. They're trying to be able to spray transfer to find that third, but it's Jabba that finally puts him down and unholy finishing business. Yep, that they are. And Mido now has successfully gotten a 20 bomb here on Ascent. Gotta point that out. Meanwhile, Unholy able to come away with that one with a three piece. As now they find themselves with 11 wins on the board and a little bit more economy to work with as well. We should still be able to see a rifle v rifle round. It should be just about even in terms of economy. So we should still be able to see that um, the Vandals and the Phantoms, of course, going all around. Except for Exala, who's going to be still trying to have a little bit of fun with that judge. I mean, there's a judge on either side. I, I think that at this point, we're, we're in that judge exchange. Everyone's going to have some 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 level. Actually, is that an Ares? No, no, okay. We're going to go back. I was appreciating the Ares play, but now it's the Empress play. Miro's going to get very aggressive. Aggressive defenses will be able to win you games. Maybe your championships. They can get a 4K straight off the rip, and they're trying to be able to do so again on the back end with this judge, but it's finished off instead as Unholy presses into tiles on. They can. Yeah, can they do it without the Empress? Yes, that answer is yes. <laughs> See, <laughs> <The answer> is <laughs> yes. <laughs> Have we seen them do it yet? No, that answer is no. Let's see if it happens. Miro, well, they won't get it now. <laughs> no. <Nope>. Chopper <laughs> puts down Facade. Oh, actually, no, they still got a chance. No, no, they don't. Well, here we are on series point now, and it will be Mirado to come through and get another elimination, and that's just going to do it. They didn't get the 30 bomb, but still 26, still really nice i mean uh, and a fantastic game coming from Miro and the rest of the crew over there at the bobcats and they just played a phenomenal game from start to finish a well-deserved win and well-deserved gg but i have to say i did like the fighting spirit that we saw coming from hcc they started to kind of amass is it them no. is it them a second time no okay all right um oh is it one of the links Yes, it is. Is it Toon Link? It is. Oh, that is pretty embarrassing. Is. That is rough. Who do you play? I'll give you $20 if you guess correctly right now. First try? First try. Give me a single hint. It's an obscure character. An obscure character? Not played very often. Is it Wii Fit Trainer? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my. I'm the interviewer for a reason, baby. I do what I do. I don't need the money. I appreciate it, though. I appreciate it. Hi. So Bowser Jr., We Fit, and I... <laughs> I forgot already. <laughs> Are you all lying to me? Am I being gaslit? No, no, no. Bowser Jr., no, no, no. We Fit, and you told me already. Oh, uh, Toon Link. Yep. Where's my main support at? Fine. Who are we playing this weekend? Uh, a lot of Brig. A lot of Brig, really? Brig Lucio, probably. Brig Lucio, really? I shouldn't say that too loud. I don't want to give all your strategies. It's over under. What do you mean over under? Like, like, do we think we're going to podium? Do we think we're going to come in last place? Not last place. Not last place. Certainly not last place. What about like fifth place? That's doable. That's, that's doable? That's, that's winnable? Third place? There, mm, like, that's where that's where things that's get like, dicey. Like, that's very doable. Okay. First place. That's very doable. First place. Very doable. Love it. That's the mindset. That's what he loves to hear. Yeah. Oh my God. Hold on. Cut the cameras. Well, who are you? Hello. Oh, oh my God. I saw you earlier. I saw the back of your shirt. And I was like, I was like, I know that name. I know him. It's a quick play game. They they Q sniped each other at land. I thought it was a scrim. It's just unlucky. Are you actually a villager player? Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about villager being notably worse in Smash Ultimate than they were in Smash 4? Uh, I wouldn't know. 
You wouldn't know. You never played Smash 4? No. Oh, that's all right. Nobody, nobody's going to hold that against you. Now, who do you play? I play Robin. Okay. Wow. Did you know Robin has the lowest pick rate in the game? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It's not Samus game. Come on. The LEDs, it looks just like Samus. Huh? Do you disagree? I guess I can see. The it. Samus vibe. Show the controller to the camera. We're interviewing. This is recording, by the way. Surprise. No, my Who do you play? I play Peach. Oh. What's up? How do we think we're doing? I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah. What's, what's your kitty? Uh, we're looking at 10 and 6 right now. Oh, hey, that's third, dude. That's better than I expected.